Want to find out why 2019 is the year of excess and 2020 is the year of restraint? Stay tuned and find out on Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for a very special edition of the show. So, um, so in in the studio, actually. So this is my year in. This is my kind of a recap and what's to come episode. Um, it's actually Thursday, January second. So I normally would have had the video out by now. So um, sorry about that. So it's not going to get out probably till Friday, early early morning. But um, I thought I'd kind of cover, you know, uh, uh, kind of recap 2019 and give you an idea of what's to come this year. So let's start with 2019. I, I kind of call that the year of excess and I'll explain why here throughout this next few minutes. Um, it's the year I kind of went all out with uh, Elite Wine TV. Um, I feel that it was my best year for this show, for the podcast, and even professionally, even though I technically took a step back and I'm in an hourly position versus being in a, a restaurant management position. I'm in an hourly position doing wine retail. And you know what? I freaking love it. Um, so yeah, I feel like I get to use all my SOM knowledge, honestly, way more than I ever did at a restaurant. Why do I call this the year of excess? Well, first of all, I, I don't think I've ever taken three major trips in one year. Like especially like gone on a plane twice to go to different parts of the world and then, you know, take a long drive. Um, so I, the three major trips I took were Provine to Germany and um, in March. And not only did I go to the Provine um, trade show, but I also went uh, to the Mosul and the Naha and I met with like three rock star producers, like the actual owners of, of and winemakers and and um, had some awesome interviews and uh, great hospitality. And then, then I went to Provine and met even more rock stars and got some really great interviews and had tons of hospitality. Um, then in May, I went over to West Texas and I met some of the rock star vineyard uh, owners and got to hang out with Neil Newsom um, and his wife and his uh, vineyard manager. And um, that was awesome. Um, and then in October, I went to Willamette Valley, like a place I've been wanting to go to forever. And uh, my favorite expression of Pinot Noir, though I did have that episode recently where I had this Sancerre Pinot Noir and I, I'm like kind of questioning that, but it's only been one. So for me to do all three of those, in addition to Texas Hill Country uh, Winery um, Symposium, San Antonio Cocktail Conference, which I've been going to for, I think that was my fourth year going last year. Um, doing all these, like doing some, some master classes, um, throughout Texas and then going back to Texom, you know, I did a lot of travel, a lot of travel and Texom was great because I hadn't been back, you know, I, I didn't get to go in 2018, uh, cause I was uh, recovering from heart surgery at the time. And, uh, so be able to go back last year and, you know, reconnect with a lot of my old friends and make some new friends was fantastic. Um, so yeah, I mean the travel alone, I, I, not only did I travel a lot more than I normally do, but I definitely spent way, way more money than I normally do. Um, I also put out way more content than I've ever done. I started the whole weekly thing actually in December of 2018 and I kept it every week throughout the entire year of 2019 and we're still putting something out in 2020, the first week of 2020. And, um, uh, I even moved to twice a week in the the uh, middle of the year. So I put out, what, like, I don't know, 70 some odd episodes this year, way more than I've ever done. Uh, I think episode, I think year one was the only time I ever really put out that much content because I was putting out stuff five days a week at first and I dropped down to three because it was getting expensive. And then 
eventually settled on, uh, I think, one. So I think the first year was the only year that I even equaled or surpassed what I did in 2019. And that wasn't even a full year in 2010. Sorry, 2009. Um, so yeah, and then I did buy a bunch of new equipment. So I'm going to highlight uh, five pieces of equipment um, and kind of talk about why I'm highlighting these. So the very first one I'm going to highlight, this I bought for uh, the San Antonio Cocktail Conference, and this is the DJI Osmo Pocket, sorry, the Osmo Mobile 2. It's a gimbal, and you put your phone in there. I don't have my phone up here, or else I would I mean I'm using a phone, but not the phone. Um, but you put it in here, and it holds everything rock steady. Now this little, this little thing right here to attach a microphone. But, um, so yeah, it keeps buttery smooth. It does, it works really well, about 90% of the time. Occasionally, I mean, it's not on, if it was on, it would be perfectly stable like this. I would have to hold it. But every once in a while, you'll be walking around, you'll be doing stuff and it goes. I don't know why, but it does. And you have to re, you have to re like pair it. It just, not repair, but repair, like Bluetooth pairing or whatever. So um, it works. Most of the time, it's really heavy. It's bulky. Um, since the phone is my camera, and as far as the old phone, you have to put it in there, take it out, try to use it, or you have to carry a camera. So this was great for what it is, but not what I really needed. So while at the cocktail conference, I saw somebody with one of these things, and this thing had come out like right before the cocktail conference, and it's about two and a half times the price of that. Uh, but this is the DJI Osmo Pocket. And this thing is amazing. I used it a lot at Provine. I bought it for Provine. Um, I definitely used it in uh, Texas, I, in West Texas, New Mexico. Um, I used it a little bit in Oregon, but more as a like a dash cam. Great camera. Matter of fact, I even used this as my main camera for a little bit, and which is a, it's a great little camera to do that with. Um, but I love this thing. I, I think it's one of my better purchases of the year. For like about two years, I've been wanting a, I've been wanting a drone. So this is, I bought this thing. I bought it used, so I didn't, I didn't go crazy. Uh, but I was gonna buy one of these at the very beginning of the year, and I was like, nah, nah, probably not a good idea if you don't have a job. So the first six weeks of the year, I was jobless because I'd left um, the restaurant industry. And then about six weeks into the year, I, I you know, landed the retail job. Um, but I didn't, you know, I didn't know exactly when I was going to start working. And I thought, well, if these drones cost about $1,000 new, it may not be a good idea to spend that much kind of money. But I did eventually buy this one. I bought it used, and it's been great. This is the Parrot Anafee. Um, the battery is, that's where the battery goes. I've got, if you look up there. This thing is, I mean, been my game changer for the show. Brought it to Oregon, bought it specifically for Oregon, and uh, I was super pleased with the results. Um, granted it was my first true use of the drone in that situation. I did fly, I, you know, I, I had a few flights before I came over to Oregon, uh, just to get used to how the drone operated. And I'm excited about using this again. I don't know when I'm going to use it again as far as for the podcast, but, um, I've been itching to fly this thing, uh, in the San Antonio area just to get some cool footage and just, you know, more practice with it. Um, but yeah, I think it really adds a lot to... Uh, my interviews because you get to see stuff from the air. I did notice that because I used this, I wasn't really taking a lot of pictures in the vineyards or even using this so much. So, um, because it's kind of hard to, you know, I got to decide one or the other. But um, since I did mention that, um, I actually just brought that bookcase in from another part of the house. And uh, it's really so I can put all my stuff over there because I tend to like have everything just kind of piled somewhere. And when I'm trying to like do stuff, it's like trying to find everything. It's kind of a real pain in the butt. Then really, honestly, one of the best purchases I did was that. What I'm using to record this, the iPhone 11 Pro. Um, I sold my iPhone 10. And that's my actual phone. But this is my camera. And it's going to be my camera from now on. Um, my, my Canon Vixie is up there on the shelf somewhere. And... At home, I like to use that camera because you know I know what to expect. I'm used to using it. It's super easy for me to set everything up. Um, the fact that I've had to record this three times is that, um, and I'm using it where I can't see uh, uh, the, um, I, I don't have the, the, the selfie cam going. So I wanted to use the regular camera for this thing. And 
in my room, I have, you know, uh, I have mirrored doors for my closet so I can see that it's working. That's always my fear when I use the phone is that I couldn't see it working. Uh, if it, so if it, if it crapped out, I wouldn't know. But Filmic Pro, which is what I'm using right now, is rock solid when I use it like this. When I use the iPad to control it in the current, you know, versions of the software right now, it crashes Filmic Pro. Um, and they're aware of it and hopefully they'll fix it when the next update comes out, which, you know, they did come up with an update and I haven't tried it with this, but anyway, I digress, trying not to digress, but the phone is incredible. If you've seen the video, the, the commercial for the iPhone 11, uh, the snow fight, you can see what it can do. Now it does need light and I thought I had enough light the last two times, but this should be enough light now. Um, but the iPhone 11 Pro, my camera from now on. Uh, I love the Vixia, but the reason I can't use the Vixia is the Mac operating system right now corrupts the video files coming from a camcorder, or at least the, the type of files that come from the camcorder. So this vest, this vest, honestly, I think it was like less than 20 bucks. I think it was like $16. This is actually my most fun purchase. Um, I mean, the drone's fun, but I mean, like the, the, the purchase, I'm like so excited that it's so functional. So I saw, so when I went to cocktail conference, my buddy, Jeremy, who has like a, who does a beer, a beer blog and all that stuff. And he's a photographer and author, all kinds of cool stuff. He had this vest. I saw him with it. And I thought to myself, man, that's kind of cool. I should get that. Like instead of carrying like this big messenger bag that I was using or worse, a backpack. So I bought this for Provine. And it's great because I got like 16, 19 somewhat pockets, got interior pockets, exterior pockets. But the, but the best pocket in many ways is the back. So this is a pocket back here. It's as wide as your back and it's like a backpack, except without that big protruding, you know, bump on your back. And what you do is you leave this open, like a say Provine, and you put your swag back there. You put all your like little brochures and stuff. This is great. You put everything you need, I mean, Provine was awesome, but everything I needed in this, in this vest, I even used it in Oregon a few times. Um, I used it in, uh, I think I used it in Texas. I mean, the West Texas, I can't remember, but it's great. You put whatever you need. You don't need a backpack and it's easy access. I love that thing. Also this year, a couple milestones. So 10th anniversary, because I started in 2009, 450th show was the 10th anniversary. And then I ended the year on episode 500. 500 freaking shows and I balled out like that's really where I came up with the year of excess because I spent almost $500 on those wines. They were all delicious. Um, but the 500th show New Year's Eve, I mean, 500 episodes is nothing to nothing to sneeze at. I mean, that, that shows commitment. One of the things I was hoping for with all that increased content, you know, increased frequency of the content was I was hoping that I was going to get, um, a fairly large bump in subscriber count. So I started the year with 187 subscribers and I ended the year with 223. So it was really 36 extra subscribers. I was really hoping, well, I thought maybe a thousand was going to be unrealistic. Um, I was hoping I was get close to that. I was hoping maybe for closer to 500. Um, and, and here's the reason why the thousand is, is, is the goal because when you hit a thousand subscribers, any ads that are shown on your videos, you get to get a share of that revenue. Now, up until what, two years ago, I think year and a half, two years ago, um, you were part of that. You, you just signed up and you're part of that revenue share, but you had to hit a hundred dollars to even get paid. Well, when Google took that away by doing the whole thousand subscriber thing, I guess I was under $100 after freaking eight years, seven years of YouTube. So that tells you how many views you need to actually make any kind of money. When I looked at it, I don't know, a few weeks ago when I was coming up with my stats, apparently I'm over an, over the $100 as far as estimated revenue. But I guess you don't get paid that because you're not part, I'm not part of the whole revenue thing. So I would like to get to that thousand. Uh, so tell your friends, subscribe, please. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. There's a little subscribe button down there. I think there's like a little bell for notification. I don't know. Everyone says it. Click that. So yeah, I'm, 
I would hope to get to a thousand at some point soon because I'd like to get my hundred dollars. 2020, the year of restraint. So everything, everything revolves around the advanced exam. By the way, this is a slideshow of, of the whole year. If you didn't figure that out. Everything revolves around the Court of Master Sommelier's Advanced Sommelier exam. Um, I took the knowledge assessment exam uh, three weeks ago, I guess, in December. Uh, and that's the exam to see if you can take the real exam. So out of 100 questions, I know for sure I got in that mid-ish 80s correct. That's pretty darn good. But is it good enough to be part of the 225 that will take the exam? And I say 225 because last year, 225 people took the exam. The years prior was 150. So I don't know if it's going to say 225 this year. I doubt it's going to go down. Maybe it'll go up. But the way they decide it is at this point solely on the exam from what they've told us. In the past, the exam plus recommendations were used. Like I said, everything hinges on the exam, you know, uh, on if and when I take it, both, you know, financially and with study time. So there are three, there are three times or three months that they do the exam. October, July, and March. And when you sign up, you choose two of the three. You have a first choice, a second choice. My first choice was July because I figured July is a really good middle point and I will easily be ready for that. I won't say easily, but I definitely will be ready for that. My second choice, instead of going October to have even more time, I chose March, crunch time, because I felt that October would be too far away and it would be too distracting. Whereas March would be like, oh man, you better be ready if you get March. I'm baking, I'm going to get July. But if I get March, I think I'll be ready. Because the way I've been studying the past three-ish months or so is as if I'm going to have a March exam. So that definitely impacts a lot of stuff. Now, my notes originally said it would, it would impact any travel I do this month and next month. But since we're not going to find out until about mid-January... Even though the last two years, or I guess three years at this point, um, I knew around third week of December, I figured when I wrote these notes that I would know around then I could be, make my travel plans. But today, I finally got my media credentials for the Santoy Cocktail Conference. Uh, I already got the, the media um, rate for the Texas Hill Country Winery uh, Symposium. And I already have all that time off at work. And they're, they're literally one after the other. Last year, the symposium was first and then was a cocktail conference. I don't remember how many days were between. But this one, it's cocktail conference. And Sunday, I guess, is kind of the last day for the conference. It's really just a barbecue. And then Tuesday of, of the weeks that this is happening is the symposium. So I have like a two-day-ish like time frame. But anyway, they're right after each other. So I'm doing both. I'm going to commute to downtown for the conference, the cocktail conference, instead of staying in a hotel, restraint. And then for the uh, symposium, um, instead of staying at the resort that, it had, that it's at, like I did last year, I'm going to stay in a hotel. It's about 15 minute drive away in Marble Falls. Um, I'm going to save a whole lot of money. Again, restraint. I don't plan to do any uh, major trips this year other than the advanced exam. And then, of course, Texom. Again, restraint. I'm not going to, you know, do the advanced exam and then go to Vin Italy or go to, I don't know, go to California or go to Australia or go to wherever and do all that. Restraint. Um, but yeah, so I've got, uh, I've got my request into the cocktail conference about the seminars and the events I'd like to go to. Um, I've got back with the symposium people about, you know, uh, potential interview time slots and also I know what seminars I'm going to go to. And then I also got accepted to go to a uh, SOM retreat with the Texas International Wine Awards. I went there a couple years ago as a volunteer to help with the judging. And this year I'm going to get to be part of uh, a group of SOMs that's going to be there more for an educational thing. And this one I really, really wanted to do regardless of what month I took the advanced exam because I really believe that this is going to be a, uh, a, a, a very helpful for the exam. So I'm excited about doing that. That's up in Dallas. Uh, I am going to have to stay at the Four Seasons, 
but we got a super good rate and uh, I kind of planned for that. So I know restraint, but you ha you kind of have to stay at the, at the resort. What if I take the, the exam in March? Okay, so I've already committed to all those things. There's one other thing in Houston, the Willamette Valley uh, Winery, I guess, Association. It's going to be there for a day for a press thing. I signed up for that about four months ago. Um, if it's March that I take the exam, I might not go to that. I might. I'm not really sure. I haven't made a commitment, haven't made a reservation for a hotel or anything like that because I will have to stay the night. If the exam is in July, then I'll definitely go to that. As far as the rest of the year, there's a possibility I'll go somewhere in Texas, maybe once or twice, but I really haven't thought about it too, you know, too hard on that. All right, so the podcast. Um, so let's kind of talk about uh, what's going on with the podcast. It's going to continue what it's been doing for the past few months. I plan to still put out two episodes a week unless there's a special episode, which honestly, other than this being a quote special episode, there aren't going to be any specials until Halloween. So there should be two episodes every week unless I have a reason to only put out one episode. Um, but I'm going to focus on being more efficient with the show. And I'm trying to actually do that with this show right now. I'm going to try to tighten up the reviews. Instead of putting a bunch of like BS at the beginning and housekeeping and giving you all but like updates in my life, which is what I'm doing right now in this show, um, just stick with, the, stick with the wine review. You know, doing one wine, I should be done in 10 minutes or less. I don't know. I just came up with that number because I have been able to do wine reviews in like eight minutes and seven minutes if I just stick to the review. Take better notes. So, you know, using the iPad or using the um, using the laptop is great for my notes, but I have a habit, especially with the laptop, of having a browser open and a bunch of tabs, which is great for the research, but then when I have to find the information, it takes a lot longer than it should. Whereas if I just have my notes and put them in the order I want to talk about them, it's right there. And you also get better with pronunciations. Um, now, over the years, I've gotten better with French and German, and well, Italian is not so bad. Spanish, I'm usually pretty good with. But episode 498 about the Israeli wine, that really kind of threw me for a loop. And the cool thing is, I spoke with um, uh, Eti Edry, who is the export manager for Yatir um, Winery, and we talked, had a really good chat about the episode and the mistakes I made in it as far as pronunciations and a few other things. She gave me for ex some extra information. And, um, you know, the goal with that episode is sometime, probably not today, but maybe tomorrow, is record an edited thing kind of in this setup here and um, correct all the mistakes I made uh, in that video and then insert those corrections in the original video and then re-release it. So that's the idea, so, so I can kind of, you know, right some wrongs there. Um, but yeah, I really want to really focus on the podcast and really kind of tighten it up and make it more efficient and make it more, I guess, watchable instead of taking 20 minutes to talk about a wine, you know, eight minutes, seven minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. So expansion of the Elite Wine uh, TV brand. So uh, the first thing I'm looking at doing is uh, creating a separate channel um, that I'm going to call Behind the Scenes with Leet Wine TV, or BTS. Uh, it's going to create a new outlet and potentially larger audience, um, which will translate into potentially exceeding the 1,000 subscriber um, minimum, and that can mean ad revenue. You know, a lot of people go on YouTube, including me, looking for tutorials and reviews of products, and I have a ton of products and a ton of experience in what not to do, especially, that I feel I can add something from my perspective that maybe some of these like professional photographers and, and filmmakers don't do. Um, because I handle, I do something completely different than most of those people do. I mean, they have their like vlogging stuff, but they're not talking about how they execute that. And even when they do, they're talking about their freaking, you know, Canon EOS 70D Sony Alpha this Pianists, you know, cameras that are costing thousands of dollars and then have lenses and you don't need that stuff. I mean, if you want to do like fancy bokeh and, and, uh, blurred backgrounds. Yeah. But I, I don't, I don't know. I don't do that stuff. Especially when I have a green screen. I don't need a blurred background. 
I'm trying to be a little more budget minded. Yeah, I know this isn't cheap. I bought it used though. Um, this isn't exactly cheap, but it's not a thousand dollars either. Um, so yeah, I'm looking to do, um, you know, reviews and tips on equipment and software. I do, um, tips on video production, uh, travel tips. I mean, I've definitely done some international travel and have some tips on how to travel, what to do, not just with your equipment, but like just kind of planning stuff out. Um, other services or stuff I use, you know, how I, how I post things. So this is something I, I, I really want to get done. But again, it all comes down to the advanced exam. When I take that, if I take it. Um, so if I take the exam in March, definitely you won't see any BTS stuff until after March, probably more like June, because no matter which date I take the exam, I'm going to take probably two months off completely. I mean, I'll probably still put out content, but as far as like just studying and just trying to relax, I'll probably record a crap load of content before the exam and have it all ready and edited and put out so that I have that two month thing. Or I may just say, Hey, I'm going to take two months off and just, you know, that's the way it is. The July exam, again, two months afterwards, I don't think I would start the behind the scenes before July. I have my notes. I might, if I don't do the exam for some reason, then yeah, absolutely. The, uh, I'm going to, start the behind the scenes stuff pretty quickly. It'll be about a weekly show. That's my plan. Maybe on Wednesdays. I haven't decided the exact day, but it won't be a Monday or Thursday. And depending on how things go, it may only be a every other week show, but my plan right now is to record a lot of these BTS shows <clears throat> the same day during the same session that I record wine reviews because I already have everything set up. Why do it twice? That's why I record five, six, seven reviews in a row so that I don't have to like lug things up and down stairs and, and set stuff up. So that's probably what I'll do. I mean, stuff that's in this room will be a little bit different and it's super easy to set up, but, uh, but yeah. So the other thing that's pos part of the possible expansion is Psalm school. So way, 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 way back in the day, I had a Psalm school that was website only an extension of this show being the diary of my wine studies for the intro and eventually certified exam. I only did about 29 lessons. The sad part is lesson 29 was Australia part one. So part two never happened. Um, and it's not going to in that incarnation. So what I'm looking at doing is uh, recreating Psalm school. Now there is somebody that has a Psalm school that just got started like a couple months ago, but it's like a food channel. So it's kind of like, I'm not really sure why they're calling it Psalm School. Uh, and it, I didn't really watch too much of it, but I don't even think the person's like a Psalm League. Maybe they are. I don't know. Um, I mean, they definitely know wine, but the point is I'll probably have to brand it Psalm School by whatever. Elite Wine TV, Mark Fusco, whatever. But this is something I don't expect to like really hit the thousand subscriber level because it's going to be so, it's going to be very, very niche. And this is why. This is going to be very in-depth videos on all kinds of beverage on, you know, all things beverage. So this is going to be advanced level stuff. This is not going to be consumer or intro. There are people out there putting out really good content for that. And I applaud them, but I'm going for, I'm going for kind of the extension of this whole, uh, you know, diary of my studies. So that's what I want to put my energy in. So knowing, doing that, I know that it's going to be a very small target audience. And in many ways, after I figure out when I'm going to start this, I might say, eh, maybe not. Definitely not doing it anytime soon if I take the March exam. It'll be well after the March exam, you know, that two-month time period. If I take the July exam, while I could put out some content ahead of time, I know that there's no way I can put out enough content to cover the the depth and breadth of what you need to know for the advanced, even if it was this, even if it was for any of the exams, because honestly, it's probably going to take about off the top of my head, probably 70 or 80 episodes to do the entire thing. And then who knows? I mean, that's, that's a year and a half and things change over time. If I don't take the exam, then I'll probably start it up pretty quickly. Just like the behind the scenes stuff. Uh, I should have probably started this a long time ago, at least a year ago, but I just, I don't know why I didn't do it. Well, I know one reason why, because a year ago, 
or over a year ago, I guess, um, I didn't have any time to do stuff. And with being an hourly employee, I got loads of time. That's why I went into the year of excess. That is the majority of the stuff about the show. I'll touch upon this. People ask me all the time if I'm going to go for master. Let's see what happens with the advanced exam. I feel confident I'll pass it, but I want to know when I sit down with my feedback where I'm at and if it's if it's something that I feel would be attainable, not easily, but without like having to like completely just like sequester myself for like the next five years. So which that might have to be anyway. So that's kind of in a nutshell what's going on and where I'm going with um, the uh, the show and the the outside the show, professional life, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm super excited about trying to take this exam. I think I will be ready. If I'm if it's July, I know I'll be ready. March, I'll be ready, just not as ready. Um, I'm excited about producing more content for the show and um, really, you know, working on tightening things up and making it more accessible and maybe getting some more subscribers. So if you know people that like wine, tell them to come on by. This is not the first, this is not the, the, the video to start them with though. Starting with like one of the interviews or one of my other reviews. I think 2020 is going to be another uh, year that uh, things will, will move up. And um, yeah, I hope you all had a wonderful uh, New Year's holiday and whatever other holiday you're celebrating. And um, if you go to the website, you can click the links above to friend me up. There's links. There are no, actually, I don't think there are any. Um, maybe I'll have some product links. And that'll be affiliate links too. Buy one of, my, buy one of the stuff off of Amazon from me and I get some money from that I guess I don't know I've never gotten paid from Amazon either I don't even think anyone's ever bought anything from those links uh, go to the website go to uh, PayPal button and uh, we'll see everyone again next time